the, uh, some of it, not all of it. Excuse me. And bring it down right about there. Yeah, I'll bring it some more. In this case, I'm going to lose just a little bit. Now in my course, I outline all of this in excruciating detail. But for today, we got to kind of rush through it. Next, I need to make what's called a duplicate of the background layer. So I drag it to the new page icon, and I have something called background copy. Now that's the layer I'm going to be working on. So now I have, here's the original layer, here's the copy layer, and I'm going to do all my work on this layer so that if I make a mistake, I can erase part of that, and I have this layer underneath it, and I can copy the original again. It just gives me a whole lot of room to go back and forth if I make mistakes. Also, I should be saving my file. And we were talking a little briefly, we touched on file format when I'm scanning. I scan all the pictures as TIFF, not JPEG. And I'm imploring you, if you're scanning in JPEG, when you scan and you save them, and you're saving as JPEG, stop it now. Okay? Do it as a TIFF because the JPEG is not meant for archiving images. It's meant for sending images through a network. Okay? And it's a very old and efficient format, but it's not good for your personal images. So now that I'm working in it in uh, 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 Photoshop, I will save this Mills 003, I'll call it 004, as a PSD or a Photoshop format. That will allow me to keep layers and I can go back and forth and without having losing any information. Next, we should do some cleaning up of the picture. Get rid of some of the spots, especially the obvious ones. We can use a couple tools. We can use what's called the healing brush or the clone stamp. Or we can use selections as well. But for now, let's stick with these. Healing brush, I hold down the Alt Option key and I click an area that is similar to the area where the spot is, but not the same area of the spot. Click and drag. Gone. Okay. Now some of you who have experience, you're like, yeah, that was easy. Well, of course. Some people didn't know. So I had to share it with them. And we'll just go on and on until we get all the spots, okay? So let's just say I get all the spots. Now we're dealing with some areas here around the face. These are always fun. Now these eyes, it looks like his eyes were colored in slightly, or someone tried to do something to define them, I don't know. Um, but the eyes are really important to get, it's just the face in general. So using the healing brush, I'm clicking around areas that I like to cover up some of these spots. Like this is a stain with mold. This is just in really bad shape. So I, I want to wipe this out and I want to start to, I need to start to clean up the eyes because those are a real problem. Now I'll get my layer palette to see the before and the after. Before, after. So, so that's much better. That's much better. So let's work on defining the eye. There's a couple ways to do it. Some ways take some artistic talent. No. So over here in the layers palette, I'll make a new layer. Double click the name layer one and call it <coughs> left eye, even though it's his right eye. 
I'll call it line. Not liner, since he is a gentleman. I will not say eyeliner for the man, but although people have been known to do that. And choose my paintbrush tool up here, paintbrush. And get a brush size like three or something that is would match his eye as if I was really painting on his eye which I'm going to do so a three is a good number and then choose a color that is similar to the area I'm about to work on so the area that I'm about to work on is kind of dark, it's brownish kind of dark so in Photoshop we have what's called the eyedropper tool it's a sampler and it will sample when I click on the dark it will say oh okay that's the color you want to use actually I want that to be a little darker click on brown click on that little brown swatch which is the color I just sampled and just pull this circle down a little bit towards here and hit OK. Now it's a little darker. Switch back to my paintbrush and let's work on the eye. Now, looking at that saying OK it looks worse. That's, that's right. Well, we're just starting. And in three hours, no, in, in five minutes, you're going to see, I go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur that a little bit. He had someone paint on his eyes, so it makes, it, it's, it's causing us some problems. But if we look now, we zoom out, and we turn that off and turn it on, we have a little more definition. Now, it's also maybe a little too harsh. So in the layer palette, I can pull down what's called opacity to minimize the strength of what I painted, but yet still help define the eye. So there's before, after. It's an improvement, okay? <coughs> I would do the same thing with the other eyes. The ear even. We could help define the ear a little better, which looks like somebody tried to do. I think every, just like everyone thinks they know how to use Photoshop, I think back in the day everybody thought they could be a retoucher and they would paint on the pictures to try to fix them up. So I could copy this eye. Oh, sorry, copy this ear. But the problem with that, I take a selection tool here. Let me show you how I could copy that. But it's, it's not going to look right. I'll show you why. <clears throat> Let me feather that to soften it a little bit. And we'll copy it and paste it. Grab the move tool up here. That will allow us to move the layer, then we shall flip it. So uh, edit, transform, <clears throat> flip horizontal, and there's, there's his ear. I could do that and get the eraser tool. <clears throat> yeah, but what's the problem with that? Okay. It's in the shadow. His, eyes in the, his ear is in the shadow. So the best thing we can do, <clears throat> like I was doing with the eye, is we do a nice little outline. And it looks like I said, someone looks like they looks like someone tried to do that with a pencil already. And let's blur that. Nah, you know what, because they've already drawn